Good in the morning. morning and how are you? This is episode 127 of Goggle Frogs and I'm Angela and this is my lovely friend and co-host Marion. Good morning everybody. And how are you this morning Marion? Absolutely shattered. We went to Milton Keynes yesterday and we're not used to traipsing around the shop so <laughs> yeah. So not only did you have to go shopping yesterday you then woke up and had a little earthquake this morning. Well, no, we were actually awake. It was half past nine, wasn't it? The two. But, oh, yeah, half past nine. But you know what I mean. Not yeah, I know what you mean. To it, but you woke yeah. up and you had a, uh, this morning, you've had a nice little earthquake down there. Yeah. So, yeah. so well, I hope everything's tickety-boo and everyone's right. still safe after it. It was a little tremory earthquake thing. Um, yeah, but they're quite bizarre. Three. Oh. That's some weeks. Yes, I mean the first two we didn't feel hear anything, and this time, yeah, it was was that an earthquake? <laughs> and then I quickly looked at Facebook, and my son-in-law had written, "Was that another quake?" <laughs> <laughs> you know. So he he wasn't sure, sure. So if at all you don't know, just log into Facebook. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it will tell you your <coughs> your local including friends. fake news of course huh well there's fake news on facebook as well isn't yeah there? yeah yeah but our friends sort of that's where we check and think yes it oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 definitely there was definitely something so yeah i wasn't there this time so i didn't feel it didn't know about it until hubby called me and said there's just been an earthquake another one so um me Ooh being the person that I am, like there must be something going it. on. So, Brigitte was upstairs and felt it, but her husband Rod was downstairs and didn't notice. Well, it's the same with us. I was upstairs and Richard was downstairs. Mm, I yeah. felt that he didn't. Yeah, it depends, because the, the house shakes more upstairs, doesn't it, than it does on the ground. Yeah. So. yeah. Ah, anyway, so uh, that's really um, a, 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 another interesting site, but we're sort of getting used to these now, aren't we? I mean, we've had three. Yeah. We're <laughs> aware of life. It's like buses, isn't it? You wait for all your life and then three come along all in a month. All within yeah, a month. Isn't it? So, <laughs> oh dear. Right. So um, just to let you know, I did have to frog yesterday. Oh, you didn't. What did no. you have to frog? Do you know what? It was so silly. So, so silly. It, it was this that I'm doing. So I read, it said the starting two rows. And there, so you did a few picots and then you knit it again. And then you, and it said now add on six. So I thought, right, that's adding six, then a knit a row and then add six and then knit a row. I thought, why am I ending up with this big triangle? So actually, when you get into the pattern, all you do is add on a six pico, going one um, way and a six pico going the other. So if you can imagine, it was straight that way and it was just getting longer because the first row, two rows had had a knit in it. So never mind, I took it back last night and I've just restarted it. So it was yeah. how it was written that uh, confused you a little bit. It, the pattern is so long, and you know me, I don't read Pants, well, I don't either. Instructions don't for anything. So I just thought, yeah, 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 I know that. Um, and thankfully, logic in my brain said, actually, that's not going to make a scarf. Certainly not a scarf that looks like the picture. So here we have it. And yeah. here we have the, I'm really it's loving looking wonderful. How, how it's, it really does show this wool off, which has given me so, so, so many different ideas for what sort of wool I want to knit with and um you know what that means that we might be doing a few similar things like this but i just think it's beautiful really really lovely and it's, it's yeah, i colors. think i'm gonna have to buy that pattern it's colors that you think uh i don't want to look like a bumblebee so i'd never put yellow and black on but this looks nothing like that because it's just so different it's in stripes so it's beautiful i'm really enjoying it um and the pattern is such a lovely 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 pattern even um, though it's pk cast on huh yeah even though it's a pico cast on yeah and you know me 
I don't do pico Lovely. cast ons ever, and I'm actually enjoying the pico cast on. So it's um, just six on two off, six on two off, which is I could cope with that. Some of them are very small and fiddly, aren't they? Yes. I don't know how I'm going to cope with the. Um, I know the pico cast off will be fine. Um, yeah. so you just have to leave two foot. You just have to leave enough, about twenty percent of the ball of wool. So I am actually going to have to purchase a digital weighing scale. So it is just twenty grams that's left. Because or alternatively, Angela, make sure you use the same pair of scales all the way through. I uh, I have baking scales and they measure ounces, but not they don't measure. 20 ah. grams and things like that so um yeah so it's um it's fine i'll just get a little cheapy thing um just i must admit it. i bought a pair of salter scales that do digital a uh, digital but they do ounces fluid ounces milliliters and grams that's good and that is really good um so yeah i can i can weigh a gram that may be, actually, you know what, because my, my scales are lovely, but I've had them for years and years and years. Um, so it may be time to, to get some proper ones because I like the thought that I can weigh out milliliters as well. Because I do find it a little bit of a, I, I, no, I just find it annoying that I've got different bowls with different things. Then I have to get different, um, you know, um, measuring cups out for liquids as well. Yeah. It would be nice if I could just stick a bowl on and then think I need to add 100 milliliters onto that. So, yeah, a good idea, but I do need to measure it. I'm trying to think. I think I got mine in. Yes, where I got mine. Good old John Lewis. Oh, did you? Yeah, well, I think so. We spent quite a bit of time in John Lewis yesterday, but let's just say hello to everybody, yeah. shall we? And then we can chat yeah. about yeah. our socializing, shopping, purchasing yesterday. Top to bottom or bottom to top? Oh, let's do bottom to top. Right. Oh, good morning, Tricia. I haven't seen Tricia for a while. Good morning, Tricia. And Marion, she wasn't here yesterday. So, hello. I hope you're fit and well. Lindy, how nice to see you. Janice, ditto. I hope yeah. the weather in London is as nice as it is here. Yeah. Jackie, not working. See hello, I'll Jackie. Yeah, not working. Georgie, lovely to see you. Hello. Deborah's not off on a jaunt in a Bridget in a Bridget van. A camper van and Brigitte. Good morning. Who has I think already reminded us that it's number one, two, seven. Hello. And good morning, Angela. Oh, good morning, Marion. Oh, and we've got another, who else has just joined us? I, oh, Robert's joined us. Hello, Robert. Hello, how lovely, lovely, lovely you. you. Robert must be having a break. So, so I wonder if he's here to check. No, it just, uh, <laughs> Deborah is in the camp of that. <laughs> at Flamborough Head. <gasps> oh, I hope have a lovely time in Flamborough Head. Are you getting fish and chips today as well from Flamborough Head? There's a very, very lovely um, chippy there. Um, so have a lovely time. It will be wonderful. Um, how nice that you can just get up and go off. Um, and yesterday, no, it was Sunday when I came back up here, wasn't it? On Sunday when we were driving up, we were saying, so lovely if you can just get up and off and, you know, you've got you can cook you can make a cup of tea in them oh you can have a little bit of a sleep if you want to so i think camper fans are amazing so there we go we've just done another little row and as you can see that's going yellow so oh i'm loving it's this one well, well i'm on another too. i hardly did anything yesterday snap neither did i but uh, oh we're on 10 10. Brigitte, okay. you know me and you we look at things it's just like number order 10 10. um 
So, shall we listen to some music? I think that's a very good idea. Now, I wonder if Robert's cup popped in to see whether we like his choice today. It, it could be. It could be waiting to see what happens in the chat box, shouldn't it? So we'll go on mute. And here you go. Thank you very much, Robert, for securing and selecting today's music. I hope you enjoyed that. As one person said, was it Janice who said peculiar Clark rather than, <laughs> was it peculiar? Rather, so uh, rather than peculiar. I can't even say it now. <laughs> Petula um clark so uh, your your mic do you want to put your mic on yes and do you know what she is she's still with us she was born in 1932 and she's 87. really, really? yeah wow wow she was a child actress i thought she was yeah sorry sorry it's getting, it's getting. oh no moving I, want, I wanted to check it before i put my um put my five put my size sixes in it <laughs> yeah that downtown was um one that brought her into the modern times i think I, I think downtown was one of the few records that pleased the parents and the teenagers really yeah because it was all the it came out, I think, at the time of um, the Beatles and all that sort of thing, and a lot of the older generation were going. Oh, I love them. And this isn't music, and then of course Downtown came out, and there was a tune. There were words you could hear. And, it's not and a middle and an end. Yeah. Well, I've told you the story about my father and the Rolling Stones, haven't I? Um. I think so, but I can't remember it off the top of oh, my well, head. I can remember as a child listening to um, Little Red Rooster and my father going, load of old rubbish, it was worse than that, and on and on and on he went. And then uh, before he died, it came on the radio and he's going, it's a classic, that is, it's a classic, you know. Always the case, wasn't it? Always the case, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Generational thing. Well, it's uh, it, it just happens, doesn't it? People don't appreciate everything, but um, I know when I listen to some of them now, and I think I can't believe that some of these tunes are being played on Radio Two. You know, that was the channel for old people when I was younger, and and when you think that punk songs are played on Radio Two and and stuff like yeah. that, I think it was so cutting edge when I was tiny she's like oh my word I was just absolutely amazed um and hey ho they're now all, all old codgers <laughs> yeah, now Richard likes Ian Drury and the blockheads yeah like, like he was very his music was very different wasn't it yes I I never really could <laughs> was he from Swindon I don't know I think I think he was I don't know I've, now I'm gonna to have to put this down sorry I just had to make those two I know that Rod uh, Alden came from St Albans because he lived around the corner from Richard and Richard never allows me to forget it um I'm, right I'm gonna look it up I'm, I'm gonna have a look look that up now uh, um, Ian right. shall I go through the the chat well that would be it? lovely thank you Okie doke. Well, it's good morning from Brigitte and 127. Trisha says good morning all, uh, as does Lindy. Brigitte says that she was upstairs and felt it. We're talking about the Leighton Buzzard earthquake again. And Rod was downstairs but didn't hear it. Uh, Georgie says good morning. Deborah saying that she loves this pattern. That's what Angela's knitting. And I've forgotten what the scarf is called. I know, knit night. Yeah. And the six on two off is only at the start of each row. So a lot of glass to stitch in between. I am going to have to buy that pattern because I am I know I've got some yarn that would look lovely on it. Jackie's saying, morning peeps, a lovely sunny day 
morning in Kent. It oh. is here as well, looking out of this bedroom window. Robert came in and surprised us all. Morning, be morning, everyone. Yeah. Uh, not quite as an SCB, SCB, SED, SED. Beg your pardon. Thank you very much. Uh, Deborah says uh, hubby is off on a walk, doing some bird watching, and I'm listening from the camper at yeah. Flamborough Head doing some knitting and she's in her element. I bet you are, I bet that beautiful this morning. Brigitte goes, good morning, Robert. And Georgie says, morning, Robert. So does Deborah. And Robert says, LOL, no, I'm actually taking my break. Uh, Janice says, my mum used to call her Peculiar Clark. Brigitte says that she got, she had that record. One of the songs she used to practice her English shorthand to, to keep up with the lyrics. Wow, you must have been really quick, Rodita. Really quick. I have trouble keeping up with it, singing, well, making a noise. Uh, Tricia, I've just noticed how much Mary Berry looks like Peck Clark. Yeah, there is a similarity there. Do you think it's the hairstyle? Um, possibly. Yeah. They've both got, and, and they're both very, very pale, aren't they? Because they yeah. were very blonde, naturally. So they're very pale. Yeah. Um, Lindy says, Robert, another great choice for lifting the spirits this morning. I remember playing this incessantly to annoy my brother. Oh, dear. Um, Robert says, uh, Tricia, yes, she does, doesn't she? Uh, I think that's to Mary uh, Petula Clark looking like Mary Berry. I suppose we ought to pull up a picture of the pair of them next to each other as they're both with us. They yeah. must, they're both of the same generation as well. Um, Lindy is saying about her brother, he couldn't stand Petula Clark. Um, and Robert's saying that wasn't what I thought I'd put on for today. <laughs> I what the other thought he'd put on for today then. Uh, Georgie says another good one. Thank you, Robert. Hello, Safi. How nice to see you. Morning, all. Do so good to catch up, catch you live for a change. Yes. Um, are you on a break or are you on a day off, Safi? Yeah. Let us know. And Robert says hello to Safi. And another uh, uh, Anne's come to join us. Morning, everyone. Fabulous. Uh, Robert's going, no, it's the bone structure. Yeah, could be the bone, they, they do say, don't they? Um, Brigitte goes, Mary Berry and Pet Clark are very similar bone structure and yeah. chin. And Robert says he's going to say, I take it he's saving it for another day. I'm talking about the tune he thought he had chosen for today, but didn't do play today for another day. I think... Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that's what he means. Safia says, working but watching you lovelies as well. Oh, isn't that lovely? It so, is. Yes. Yes. And Robert's going, yes. Yes, that must be to my convoluted way of saying, yeah, whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, so earlier today, I, I went out to the, uh, the shed to get something out so that my husband can borrow it. It's a big spirit level that my dad's got. And uh, as I was walking there, next door's cat was um, there wanting a bit of a rubber dub, as we call it. So um, it's very vocal. It's another black cat called Ollie. Um, so I was walking to the, um, I, I walked and got this uh, thing. And then as I was coming back, gave him a rubber dub and then went to walk away. And the cat grabbed hold of my skirt but his claws in my skirt to stop me from going away. So I turned around and said, okay, then gave him a little bit of a rub it up again. Then he grabbed hold of my leg. <laughs> nice <laughs> one, yeah. So it was really quite, it was very, very cute uh, this morning. And then suddenly Ollie had had enough and just walked off. I thought, oh, okay, you're all right now, are you? <laughs> I, would, I took my, our Ollie to the park on Sunday for a run. And I caught, there was a man and his little boy playing football. And I went, Ollie, Ollie, come on, it's time to go home. And he turned to me and he went, are you calling me? <laughs> he said, my name's Ollie too. Oh, 
I just have to laugh, don't you? There's um, not much else you you can say, but I think the classic was I was take, we'd taken Ollie for a run, and this other man was calling his dog, and Ollie kept going over towards him. And I said to this man, is your dog called Ollie as well? And he said, no. I said, well, has it got a similar name? And he went, no, it's entirely different. Well, so I said, well, what is your dog called? And he went, Molly. You're joking. Oh, that, oh, that's so different. That That's so different. And you think, Something. you plonker. I know, I know. You absolute plonker. <laughs> Well, we've always chuckled because at some point we will get um, a rescue dog. We want a rescue British Bulldog and um, one that probably does less exercise than even I do. Um, so anyway, we want one eventually when we're both at home and, and able to look after it. Uh, but we want to call it Marion after Alan's nan. Um, but the problem is that our next door neighbour is called Marion as well. <laughs> so we'd have to explain that when we're saying, Marion, don't do that. Marion, come here, that we're actually talking to the dog and why it's called Marion, not that we've called it after her, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah. yeah, so it, it will be quite amusing when we eventually get one. Well, let's face it, it's confusing enough in the picture house when the three of us are there and somebody goes, Marion, and three of us look up and go, yes. <laughs> it is isn't it yeah. oh oh and brigitte says well molly is so different from ollie maybe he spelt it with a y <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh dear oh so anyway you were um you were out shopping yesterday yes so, yeah, so, went to, so let me to ask them. did you pop into the um uh, the craft section at john lewis I had a quick look. Did you? Because so did I. <laughs> They've got their Christmas bits and pieces out. Yes. Mark, uh, John Lewis. <clears throat> Richard heard the magic word craft section. Oh, did um, I didn't buy anything. There was nothing that went buy me, buy me, buy me. But I did notice a King Cole um, chunky that's rather nice. Oh. If only I could remember what it was called. Oh, it, a baby chunky. Uh, All right. <coughs> mm. I'll, I'll have to try. Well, I, I was rather tempted yesterday, but I didn't purchase. But I did see some lovely, lovely books. Uh, West Yorkshire Spinners knitting books. Very, very good. Um, but in the end, I didn't buy them. Uh, I went to the cafe instead. So, <laughs> well, we were looking at a new bed. All oh, right. Yeah, and um, and it's nice there, yes, we did. We had a nice kip in there, and it's proudly advertising, saying made from Wensleydale wool, including blackface Leicester. And I said, oh, I knit with that, and they went, pardon, <laughs> Stuart blackface Leicester, and I've knitted with Wensleydale. And I'm knitted with Scott, and they were somewhat pleased that I actually knew that they were sheep, a sheep. Yeah, good. <laughs> that the length, there was different lengths of staples to be, of yarn to be used for different things. And it changed the whole attitude of the shop assistants because I knew what I was, I knew something. And you could appreciate what yes. they've gone into it as well. They weren't having yes. to explain from scratch. So I didn't realise. I'll have to have a look. Not that we need a new bed at the moment, but um, it is nice to see that. Yes. A good one is not cheap. No. And, and the one we've got is only, I think, about three, four years old. So it's not quite old enough yet to replace <laughs> they say a good bed should last 10 years yeah the the, the first one that we got i'll never forget we we bought our flat um they then brought the completion date forward by about six weeks to the day before christmas eve was when we um completed 
so we went out we ordered everything of, of course it was 13 weeks for everything so we went into marks's ordered the bed went to rooms in upminster got the settees and tables everything so when we moved in we just had um what was it two garden chairs that was it two garden chairs and some we borrowed bed settee off somebody um and i think i don't even think we had a table so it didn't matter because it was christmas i was going up to my parents he was going to his parents because it's just like we've got nothing here um and it was so funny but the bed we bought from marx's was very expensive and it had all different walls in at the time i wouldn't have known anything but when this thing arrived it was absolutely impossible even with two of us to try and turn that mattress it was so heavy but you know what it was wonderful much much nicer than the one we've got now so well, we're looking at one that you zip down the middle oh yeah yeah so you can have a medium on one side and firm on the other yeah and that of course makes it lighter to turn yes yes because i um, love a soft bed all right hang on i'm gonna lose lose the chat we're going back to names again robert says he, he stopped answering people when they call when they call him richard i can't say i blame him uh i used to get called ma and, and i hated that ma ma um my my daughter whose name is kirsten she got her name got shortened to cursed mind you i'm dreadful with granddaughter her name's elora e double l o r a and i call her lolly um <laughs> or lollipop but i'm one of the few that do um, you're allowed to aren't you yeah. Yeah. brigitte says that there were in one school in one year at school there were five girls called brigitte five um and lindy saying that she never answers to linda it doesn't register as someone wanting to talk to me quite right too um robert saying he's got to go folks see you tomorrow oh, bye, bye bye it's a bit i don't know whether we're caught him saying goodbye lindy Lindy saying, sorry, only joining you for such a short time this morning. Long phone call coming up. Catch no, it's tomorrow. lovely to have you, even if it's just for a couple of minutes. Even so, if it's only long enough to say good morning. Sorry? Even if it's only long enough to say good morning. I know, I know. And Goggle Frogs is, we're here for you whenever you can pop in. So no one's ever late no one's ever leaving early it's just when you have time to drop up drop by and uh catch up with us and it's just nice to give ourselves a little bit of time to sit down exactly. and officially knit exactly because exactly. yeah. that's what this is all about yeah and we have um brigitte says she's got a son and daughter-in-law who turn their mattress deborah and sappy say bye robert Richard's just walked in and said, was there an earthquake? Yes, no, there was. Yes. Oh, no, he's, he, he's re reiterated, did the earth move? Yes. Most people in Leighton Buzz only felt it upstairs. Our first time. Our first time. But in Leighton, it was very pronounced. So, really? Yeah. How far away is Leighton from? Uh, two two miles. miles. Two miles yeah um it was very very it was very pronounced even downstairs so because the first one that we had was so so funny is uh, <laughs> i was downstairs and i thought oh what was that um and then suddenly my mum appeared downstairs <laughs> and just like, like what happened closely followed by my husband and um so I went outside outside into the street. Everybody was out in the street saying, what happened, what happened? And suddenly, <laughs> Bobby appeared. So he just picked up the closest, um, what do you call it, um, house coat, which was mine. <laughs> <laughs> but he was fast asleep and he was like, oh, because you don't I, I know. I hope it was all frilly. 
<laughs> it was pink. <laughs> and it, I, I saw him out at the back of the, the house and uh, like behind the, one of the cars on the drive. Really shocked because he was fast asleep when it happened because he'd been working really late the night before. Um, and I, as I turned around to the uh, neighbours and said, I do apologise. He's obviously just woken up in a bit of a tits. You <laughs> should have taken a photograph of that one. Oh dear. So yeah, but it, it was it was very pronounced where we are apparently, but I wasn't there. So, all right. Do you think we ought to do Facebook? As oh my word! Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I'm going to finish my row. Um. Oh. Well, I'm delighted to say my hair's getting cut again this afternoon is it and after discussion with granddaughter decided that I've, because it's now getting to be all oh, this mirror on this is now beginning to go straight over my ears we're going to try and just have it trimmed in the hope that it will finally go straight into the going well sense. the longer it gets the more weight that gets on it the better because then that weighs it down doesn't it one would hope so. Oh, lovely. Yeah. The I think. lady in John Lewis yesterday, she had, I think she'd had her hair dyed white or silver, then on top of that, pink and purples, and it looked amazing. Wow. It really did. Oh, and Jackie says, How are you getting on with the chigagoos? Chigagoo, chigagoo. Cheer, cheer, I'm, I'm loving them i last night i actually changed to the um interchangeables because i thought i i can't just use the one so um i've used i've changed to the interchangeables i have to say i love the fixed ones more but i love these too i don't know what it is it's just the tips they are so um the wool just moves across them differently, but even though it's moving wonderfully, you can tell that there is still tension to stop things slipping off. Mm. But hit down here, it's as if it's, that's not, I, I don't know. You have to use them, but they're absolutely amazing. So um, I think I'm going to have to invest in a pair. And yeah. Jackie says she's pleased to hear that. The only thing I would say is when you look online, there are so many different um, styles, but um, I can't even remember. I, I looked at them last night and they're Japanese or inspired by Japanese. So the, you pronounce it, is it chu, chu, Chugu? I, I can't remember. I'll, I'll have a look again for tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow's um so the fact that they're japanese inspired i don't know what they do differently but i i actually think the point just seems longer than on some of them that we have it doesn't seem as sudden and sharp you watch i'll have a look at mine and, and um yeah it'd be way. nice if we could see a picture of the chigagoos next to a maybe a pair of addies yeah. so you can see how the points go I'll, I'll have a look it's just they just flow really beautifully um mm. so it, they are lovely um oh yes please jackie she, jackie's very kindly offered to loan me a pair as well sells them. uh so i was looking around and there were the the red ones and blue ones and short ones and longer ones i thought i have no idea so i'm presuming that these are the five inch ones is that right so these are not they do three inch ones and then they do five inch ones so i think these are the five inch and this is the thing isn't it this is what i want to go to events for to sit there and do a couple mm. of rules on every different type of needle out there um so I know that we can't do that so thank you so much jackie deborah um, says that she loves the chigu chigu fixed circulars best they're expensive but i think they're worth it i think they're pronounced chow goos that's it chow goos yes it's chow goos um i knew that there was like a, a pronunciation as soon as i heard it i thought ah oh, it makes sense now 
Um, yeah, I, I do like the fixed ones. It's just when you buy the fixed ones, then if you need something uber short, you have to buy yeah. another one. So I know the interchangeables are are really good, but I, I'm absolutely loving the, the fixed ones. Um, but let's face it, most things that we do are on four, four and a half or fives with the odd three. Yeah. Um, so it, it, I'll get something for Christmas. So let's have a look at Facebook. I'll we'll just do, share. Jackie, we'll do. Jackie's saying to send her a message. Oh, that's so nice. And um, Deborah says, she knits on her chow goose mini circulars knits her socks on those definitely uh, the best do you know what? i might even try them again um so let's have a quick look uh and laura could buy me a, just a pair for christmas yeah those uh, well, me too socks. well i know that sometimes people think oh it's just a pair of needles but when it's the person who's receiving them you think oh, that's incredible mm. um, so here we go we've got uh, that again from georgie um that we might not have had anything go in here we may not have had anything go in there, were, there was because i had, oh, yes, a look Deborah. Last, I had a look last night so uh it, it's when whenever there's a comment on a on a post to the, the top so Deborah, using your project bag, way with puffins wearing Fair Isle today. All the puff, puff, sorry, puffins are gone now from Flamborough for the year, though. Um, have also your goggle frogs bag with me. Thank you so much. So goggle frogs is out, and I love the puffin bag. Thank you so much. That's brilliant. Uh, I, I just love Flamborough. It's so lovely. Might have to have a little bit of a drive out there one day interesting bit of knitting RAF comforts committee com, ugh, committee was formed by the air council in october 1939 to de determine the type and quantities of knitting comforts required for the RAF as well to arrange for their collection storage and distribution through their depots inspired by a random ebay purchase of an RAF comforts committee pin badge some years ago and recently rediscovering said badge this episode delves into the little into a little of the history about the RAF Comforts Committee. Full show notes at shinybees.com forward slash 157. So there is a lovely oh, episode there. Way. So I think there's a few of us might be listening to that a little bit later. That was Dawn, wasn't it? Thank you, yes. Dawn. Yes. Um, Dawn is the queen of podcasts. She really is. Oh, look at this. Joining Goggle Frogs from the camper van here in Flamborough. Yeah, Deborah's got her priorities right. Oh, Listen, Goggle Frogs mug and the just internet. Look. Well done. Just look at that. Oh my word. It just looks so pretty. I'm loving it. I'm looking. Do you know what? I love looking in the camper vans and things. The bunting. I love the kettle. That's a whistling kettle, isn't it? I've got my whistling kettle constantly in the back of my car. No one can believe I drive around everywhere with um, my camping stove, my whistling kettle that is pink, and two things of gas. So I just oh, hope that. it never gets too hot so that my car explodes. <laughs> um, but that's lovely. Thank you for that. Uh, oh, Brigitte, throwback Tuesday. Rod bought the yarn back from Shetland a few years before, but renovating our retirement palace and then the old house men i didn't get to, at this knitted till march 2014 he wanted a zipped up waistcoat to go under his motorbike jacket made the pattern up as i couldn't find one with a zip and there was a limited amount oops of cream color i use for some of the orange as well that is lovely and i will say this again i cannot believe how amazingly well that zip is knitted in I think I did learn something. Never ever use an, um, a plastic zip with plastic outside because it doesn't look very nice. Is when that the one that, uh, that Brigitte wasn't sure how far the yarn would go and Rod sat down and worked it out and she had something about six inches left. And I know, it's just incredible. Talking back to the wire. I know, 
and I can't believe how well you can put zips in. It's incredible. So it's lovely. And I know that has had lots and lots and lots of use. And Rod was extremely happy with that. Mm. It's a lovely pattern. Absolutely love it. Have you seen the coat Rod made for himself? No. Brigitte, please put a picture of that on. It is amazing. Absolutely amazing. The please pattern, do. The pattern, I know it's sewing, but the pattern matches all the way across. Sleeves across the front, round the back, everywhere. Um, I, I can't begin to describe it, but let's suffice it to say that I hadn't met Rod before, and I saw him down south, downtown on his scooter, and this gentleman, well, this gentleman was coming on with the most amazing coat on, on a scooter, and I said, oh, hello, Rod, I recognise him. That's funny. Oh. And Brigitte says it took her four hours to put the zip into that waistcoat. That's why. Mine didn't take me four hours. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, do you know what? I'm going to frog this whole blinking thing and knit it up as a jumper. As it really didn't work as a cardigan. So, uh, never mind. But here we go, Throwback Tuesday. I made this cover to a scar book. Is it a scar book for Gary's anniversary present 12 years ago? So that's from Robert. That is beautiful. beautiful. The amount of time that's gone into that. Brigitte's confirmed my story. Oh, right, good. Right. Perfect. I did put a little note on. We had a little bit of a chat last night because I said they're absolutely amazing. And Brigitte said, they're just like, um, what, did, what did she say? Um, when I said they're amazing, um, and she said, they're only straight tubes. And I said, they're a perfect color and width. I've seen so many that are very fiddly and very stretched because I find a lot of um, mm. welly warmers are just really stretched um, and they're longer than a lot of people make them as well. A lot of people just make them just to go over the, to the top so they end up popping off. So I did think that they were really good. Um, and then Rebecca saying, sorry to have missed us. You've never missed us. You can, you know, um catch up anytime and then not sure that would be deborah if deborah wears the bag and the knitting it, yeah if deborah let us know how the balloons help with the blocking that's right yes that's right so please let us know we'd love to know um that's another lockdown pick well it's the same one isn't it but just to show that again um oops Oh, and your aunt phoned last night. So tell yeah. us what your aunt said. Well, she phoned and she uh, says, I've received a parcel. So I said, oh, that was quick. And oh, it's beautiful. It's lovely. It's more than I could have dreamed of. I don't know what I'm going to say to you. So I went, does it fit though? And she went, yes, it fits perfectly. I said, that's all that matters. And the color's lovely. It's so soft and where you've got the buttons from. And she, she just eulogized about it, which is lovely. But I do it because I love her dearly, not because I want. <laughs> but yeah, she's she's just lovely. And she always appreciates what you do. Um, uh, and you've met her, Angela. I know. You've met her. Um, yes, and that was just as her eyesight was going. If you remember, she she wanted to feel everything. She was so happy, wasn't she? She's yeah, a very, she was. very happy, exuberant lady. Yeah, and she's had um. She hasn't always had the best cards dealt to her. Let's put it like this. Mm. Oh, and has got a dentist appointment, so she's got to go. Oh, oh. and Deborah says the balloon blocking was not a success. Balloons oh. are not the same shape as heads. Ah, 
Right. Fran was rude to me in my next post because I said that Aldi have all their stock in and she goes, Madam, you are an enabler. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and before um, people have, or before you've even said that, Tracy's ordered hers. Um, dear, uh, sad when a lot of yarn is in your stash. I was proud of myself. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, I think Brigitte has got quite a bit of it already, which is great. I think, I think Fran went online, though, and ordered bless her. <laughs> it's, it's really good, isn't it, to get to stock up on on stuff that you know you're going to use or yeah. come in handy. And uh, sometimes we do things and, um, well, actually, they're all lovely anyway. But sometimes you, you've done one thing and you think, do you know what, I'm just going to buy that again and again and again because it is and, so and we cheap. All, we all know that Aldi is good value. I don't think I've had a knot in any of the Aldi yarn I've bought. No. no. Um, it's good value. It knits and crochets up beautifully. Um, it, it, it's, yeah, it says what... And it's perfect for hard wearing. It's so hard wearing. And it's it's lovely, what I term, lovely acrylic. It feels lovely. Yeah. It doesn't scratch. It's and have you noticed well. they're bringing out more colours? They're bringing out a lot more colours now. Mm. Oh, my yarn's got caught. There it is. Oh, sorry. No, so thank you for you posting can't. all of your bits on there. That was brilliant. Um and thank you ever so much, Marion, for encouraging people to go out and buy more. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes a change. They're usually encouraging me. Yeah. Um, Jackie says that she never blocks her hats. She just wears them as good as blocking, she says. Yeah, I'd go along with that. I, with the one which is like a beret shape that I did in that yarn tellier, I did block it with a dinner plate um, and I was given that tip by Wendy. Um, so I looked, I thought, okay, I'll do this. So I put a dinner plate inside the hat, sprayed it with water and left it to uh, for a couple of days. And then it has that perfect beret shape, you know, when they go mm -hmm. flat. Um, and she'd done a beautiful fair isle hat um, and it was, it just pulls the whole, um, like, pattern perfectly. Isn't it way it wasn't too big? No, you just, you just get the right size. Like, you may have to get a slightly smaller one, um, or it may be a large side plate, but you need something to, to stretch it so you can see the full um, mm. image. Because I thought that as well, is it not going to be too big? And no, it wasn't. Um, because it actually pops back in, you know, around here. So that doesn't stretch, but it actually shows all of that intricate detail. Um, so so that's she thought the hat was ruined uh, as it stretched out a bit, but it was fine once it had dried. Have it with me to wear later on my walk after lunch as it's a bit chilly. Here. <coughs> and she says to Jackie, yes, I'll do that in future. Thanks for the tip. Mm. And later on, Jackie says she's welcome. And Brigitte has posted pictures of Rod's coat on. Right, I'll page. go back. Let me just refresh. And, and I think I've I've got through over half of this cake, so I think this will be finished this week. This shawl, unless I get fed up with it and it gets is that that it? Oh, wow. wow thrown in the corner in disgust or something. Now the colour bands are getting smaller. Okay, so there's a picture of Rod's coat. It hasn't come up. Incredible. Can't see it, Angela. What I find Ah, there we go. There it is. Showing, sharing. Now we've got it. Now we've mm. got it. What I find absolutely amazing is my eyes are 
drawn straight to the white squares mm. and they're exactly the same on the front as they are on the back yeah and it's those little attentions to detail that rods nails with everything he does yeah lovely isn't it absolutely stunning and as a knock on to that i was in debenhams and i picked up this blouse and tried it on really nice and it had a pattern but they hadn't matched the pattern across the top and i think it was 35 or 40 pounds and i thought i'm not paying 40 pounds where they can't even bother to match the pattern across then i went into primer <laughs> And the pattern was matched and the blouse was eight quid. And you think, come on, if Primark can do it for eight pounds and all of them matched across, mm. why can't a company who are selling a blouse for 40 pounds do the same? I know. And Trisha says it's a work of art. What a talented hobby. Uh, yeah, it is. It is um, uh, Trisha, I've, I've seen some of his other work. Very kindly made me a knitting bag, which to some extent I think is too good to use. And the same with the one Claire made me as well. They're lovely to use, but you think they're too good to use. It's a bit like when we used to wear Sunday best. Do you remember? Too good to yeah. use. But because they were the most expensive things we had. But that was the point of them. You should wear them out and use them. Yeah. And we never did. My mum, when my mum got up this morning, she's oh, she says, I think I might wear this today. Um, my mum likes a couple of shops over in Radlett. So when she comes down to me, mm. we go over and have um, a day shopping. So last time we were there, my mum got this little jacket and it was reduced from £240 to £50. And, uh, it, I know, and it was it, it looks lovely. So she put it on this morning, and she's put a little top on. But I think she's going to wear it this afternoon when we go for the fish and chips. So and uh, so her Sunday best will be coming out for a nice yeah, outing. I totally agree, Safi. She said she bought a dress from Monsoon for a hundred pounds, and when it arrived, the pattern wasn't matched at all. I thought for that price, it was pretty shoddy work. I yeah. totally agree with you. And the only way we're going to change things is by sending them back. I mean, let's face it, ladies, if, if we're knitting something, we try damn hard to match our pattern across. Can you imagine if we knitted a fair old cardigan and we hadn't knitted it in the round? We would be doing our utmost to make sure it matched pattern. And Deborah is addicted to um, buying project bags buying them and making them and Rob even matches the patterns on the project bags but people it, it's a really important part isn't it and I know mm -hmm. when I'm knitting something when the pattern is not to match it we re I really struggle with it uh, when it's not perfectly um, matching but that is the, sometimes the pattern but on this jacket that my mum got it's like um it's a bit of a machino type effect thing but that's all lovely everywhere is really lovely and it's a, a probably a smaller designer who struggles a lot more um not one of the big high streety ones and, and you think why is it that certain high street brands are, are struggling because like you say you look at a dress it's 100 pounds and it's not matched or some of the stitching isn't right or something's not sitting yeah. right and you just think it, it's a real shame um but lots of those high street brands have gone now haven't they monsoon well, yes. has gone yeah. and i think a lot of it might be as well is that um a lot of younger people don't realize that the pattern should match across should it should um but like you say in, in you know some of the cheaper shops it's it's done um so, so how can they do it and the big ones not i think it's just uh being very very clear about quality control and when you ship something out if they don't match 
every item, then it's more cost effective for the producer to complete. So yeah, they, they get more items out the fabric if they don't match it across. Yeah, but you've got to be very specific and say, no, this is what we expect. Mm -hmm. This is how you cut it out. You have to line these up. If you don't say that, then people will think, well, that's fine because I can make another six garments out of this. And then it's sell them terrible. myself, and that's additional profit for me. Yeah, yeah. But we just want nice clothes, don't we? Yeah. And it, it's not about price. It really isn't because we can get some really, really good stuff that's expensive. Just like our wool, let's face it. We all have expensive wool that we absolutely love, but we also have very affordable wool, uh, which is amazing. It really is. And it lasts forever, doesn't it? So yeah, well, I was looking at curtains yesterday, and I said to the shop assistant, "Well, what's the repeat drop on that?" Oh, well, I'll have to look it up. You know, and it was on one fabric I liked. It was twenty-four and a half inches. Well, when you're having um, two two widths, double widths, you can be losing one, two. You could lose a yard and a half of fabric, and at nearly. 50 pounds a yard you lose you could be losing 75 pounds because it's got to match all the way across as well yeah for me if it wasn't they'd be going back. oh yeah yeah um and i'm thinking that's a big drop uh um, repeat not to get right and it's a lot of money when i think what i that i could spend 75 pounds on i mean by some really nice yarn. Yes, definitely. And then you can buy just one or two balls a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maybe not 50 quid or 75 quid. Anyway, it's 11 o'clock. I know. And we, we need to very quickly finish the chat. Um, Debbie said, Deborah says that she's addicted to uh, project bags. She buys them and makes them. Brigitte says, thank you very much for compliments. He should have been a be bespoke tailor in an upmarket business, definitely. Totally. Gwen says she uses a project bags, as I have so many use UFOs, unidentified finished objects, unid unfinished flying objects. Uh, Brigitte, David, Deborah, one day I shall count my bags. They are everywhere in my house. Ditto. Ditto. Um, yeah. Brigitte says, great morning, ladies. Thank you for your time and entertainment. Well, I've now got to go and do a quick tidy up because my cleaners arrived early and, <laughs> and I haven't even done the dishes. And I do not like to have a sink full of dirty dishes when she arrived. <laughs> mm. So you're the sort of person that every cleaner loves. <laughs> so anyway, with I'm, that... I'm the tidiest person going. We're going to say goodbye. Uh, it's been lovely spending time with you. Have a wonderful day and we are back tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. when Robert will be with us uh, as well. Um, to be honest, I don't know whether I'm going to be in the north or the south, but if well, I am in this, uh, the other side, having a rather large GNT, I think. Well, I, I could be heading home tomorrow. I've got a Skype call with my dad at 3 o'clock. So I may be <coughs> getting in the car at four and that should give me just enough time to get back down south. With your mum? No, my mum's staying here. Well, we're waiting to hear what the announcement is today from Boris. So let's at see. Ten, that is, isn't it? Oh, is it? When was it? When's it due? Don't know. There's an announcement today. So we'll go and listen to that. But whatever happens, we will be with you at eight o'clock tomorrow hopefully see you again soon thank you so much for me angela and marion it's yes lovely to, to see you all you. again and fantastic. enjoy the last of the summer weather yes with some wine bye gee gin bye <laughs> bye bye <laughs>